Ontario Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca is unveiling what the party is calling a fully costed campaign platform. Let's listen in. I have to tell you, over the first few days of this election, there's a couple of really important things that I've learned. Number one, it is true. When you're out there campaigning day after day, people do start to recognize you a little bit more. So just the other day, Saturday morning, my wife and I arrived at Pearson Airport. And as we were walking through the airport, one of the staff there made a point of coming up to me and introducing himself, and then saying to me that he's so thrilled with the work that I'm doing and our team is doing. And as he about to turn to, was going to turn away from us, he turned back and he said, I just want you to also know, you are so much more handsome in person. <laughs> and I was feeling pretty good about myself, because AI was recognized, and who the heck doesn't like a compliment like that? But I also learned in politics that family is so important, because it helps ground you. When I got home that night, I was telling that story to our daughters, and one of them looked at me and said, as only a child can, geez, Dad, if you were at the airport, doesn't that mean you had a mask on? So there you go. Family helps to ground us, which is so, so important. I have to say, again, I'm so thrilled to be here, to have this chance to present to you this platform that Ontario Liberals are bringing forward today. It is a platform that is fully costed. It is fair. It is forward-looking. It is a plan that we call a place to grow, a place to grow here in this province of ours, which is so critically important at this particular time. It's important at this time because, you know, when this election campaign kicked off a number of days ago, I said, and we've been saying from the very beginning, that we saw a budget from the Ford Conservatives a number of days ago. And that was a budget that, despite the challenging circumstances our province finds itself in, well, that was a budget that had no plan, no discernible or coherent path forward for the people of this province. And then two weeks ago today, literally two weeks ago today, we saw an election platform unveiled from Ontario's NDP. And that was a platform with no costing and no numbers. Two weeks later, still no costing and no numbers. On the one hand, the Ford Conservatives with no plan, and on the other hand, the NDP with no numbers, no costing. Neither approach makes sense. Neither approach is good enough for the people of Ontario. Neither approach is responsible and thoughtful or competent. And in particular, after the past two years that we've had in this province, this is a time when the chips are down and the stakes are high for Ontario families to have leadership at Queen's Park that is truly on their side, that has a plan, a comprehensive and inclusive plan, that isn't short on details, that will break new ground, and that is fully costed and responsible. And that's, that's what a place to grow will deliver for the people of Ontario. I also want to acknowledge, you've heard me say this before, I've been so blessed to live my entire life here in this incredible province of ours. But we know here in Ontario, the past four years have been tough, but the past two years in particular have been extraordinarily difficult for Ontarians. Well, here's the thing about the people of Ontario. We are historically a resilient and strong people. We've gotten through tough times before, and I have no doubt, I have no doubt that we will, we will weather this storm and get through to a much better and brighter future. But from my perspective, from our perspective, we will not get there if we don't acknowledge the challenging circumstances of what we've had to go through. If we don't have leadership at Queen's Park that includes a plan like a place to grow, that acknowledges that too many in our province are still not okay. That I think it's okay, we think it's okay to acknowledge this, and in fact, we think it's, it's essential. It's essential to make sure that if we are going to go forward, that everybody in this province who shows up and does their part each and every single day is part of our collective success, and that's what a place to grow will deliver. I think, for example, that we have to acknowledge 
that too many of our kids in this province are not okay. I think about my own daughters, the two million kids across Ontario who attend publicly funded schools, who've had to struggle while trying to learn through screens for too long, who've been isolated from their friends, who haven't had the chance to be at their very best, who need extra support. I think about our seniors, people like my mom and my dad who are getting just a little bit older and face some of the challenges that seniors do. Seniors who've witnessed unspeakable challenges during this pandemic. I think about how the Ford Conservatives want to double down on a failed system and continue to reward for-profit long-term care while eliminating the liability for the worst performers in that sector. I think about the environment. I think about the, the air that we breathe and the water that we drink and how we want to protect our green spaces and how we face challenges in that area. I think about hard-working families. You see the cost of everything skyrocketing in the wrong direction right now, skyrocketing in the wrong direction for four straight years under Doug Ford and his friends. The cost of groceries, the cost of pretty much everything else, including buying or renting a home in this province of ours. These are just some of the challenges that we face, and we need to make sure that we are listening, that we are learning, and particular learning the lessons during COVID. And again, let me just stress, the Ontario Liberal Plan, a place to grow, is making choices, specifically making choices that will make your lives better, that will make everyone's life more affordable. So when I talk about students, I think about the fact that we will cancel Highway 413 once and for all, and we will invest that money in our public schools. I think about our seniors, and I'm so delighted to once again say we will deliver a home care first guarantee and we will end for-profit long-term care in this province. I think about our hard-working families, those who are struggling despite the fact they keep showing up, falling further and further behind. That's why we will deliver Buck-A-Ride province-wide and 8% off prepared foods under $20 to make your life more affordable everywhere you go in this province of ours. And I think about our workers and their families, people like my grandfather Alfonso, who came here in 1951, worked so, so hard but was injured on the job. Despite the fact that he tried his best, it was such a struggle. And it's a struggle for too many workers in this province today because Doug Ford is determined to drag us backwards. That's why we will deliver. We will deliver paid sick leave and we're going to deliver a real living wage and we'll put workers and their families at the center of the decisions that we are going to make. And of course, I think about what it means to be able to afford or rent a home in this province of ours. You know, this is a conversation that my wife and I have on a regular basis about where will our daughters, Talia and Grace, where will they be able to buy a home or frankly even rent in years to come? Which part of the GTHA, we live in the GTHA, which part of Ontario, will they get the chance in an affordable way to live in the neighborhood or near the neighborhood where they grew up. That is a dream, a dream that I hold dear, but a dream that is falling further and further out of reach for more and more Ontarians, particularly first-time homebuyers and renters, despite how hard they work. And that has to change. That has to change. And I think about my dad. You know, I mentioned this in my speech a number of weeks ago, back on March 26th. My dad had a career in construction management that spanned more than five decades. My brothers and I had the chance to work with my dad through some of our summers in high school and even university. My dad in particular worked in residential construction. And he poured his heart and soul into making sure that families across this province could in fact achieve that dream of home ownership. And that's why it is so important to me and so important to the Ontario Liberal team to bring forward more than 40 new ideas that will make it more affordable and easier for first-time home buyers to purchase that home. 
for renters in this province to afford the shelter, again because they're working so hard to make ends meet. Ontario Liberals, if elected, will deliver on a housing plan that is bold, that is ambitious, and that again will make life so much more affordable. For example, we are going to bring back meaningful rent control everywhere in Ontario. We're going to create the Ontario Home Building Corporation. You know, a second ago, a second ago I talked about the work that my father did throughout his career. But here's the sad fact. We're at a place now in this province where the free market alone can't solve this challenge, this crisis that we face. If it could, if it could, it would have been solved by now. That's why the Ontario Home Building Corporation will be vested with an unprecedented amount of capital monies, $15 billion over 10 years, as a lending authority or a builder. And every single home that the Home Building Corporation sells will only be sold to first-time home buyers in this province. We're going to end the practice of what's known as land banking while speculators sit on tens of thousands of approved units, units that have building permits in place, yet nothing's happening on those sites. You know, I chatted with Mayor Bonnie Crombie from Mississauga just last Friday, and she explained to me, as she has said publicly, that there are roughly 60,000 units of housing that have approvals in the city of Mississauga, including permits, that nobody is building right now. And unlike the Ford Conservatives, I'm not going to point the, we're not going to point the finger of blame at our municipal partners. We are going to work together. We're going to work together to, in a thoughtful way, end exclusionary zoning for units that are two stories and have three units in them. We're going to make sure that municipalities have the funding that's required so they can deal with approvals processes. And again, we will partner with all levels of government so that over 10 years, we help end the affordability crisis in housing by building and delivering 1.5 million new homes across Ontario. This plan that is balanced and thoughtful and responsible and fully costed is a plan that will give the people of this province relief. Relief in housing, yes, but also relief in all of the other fundamental areas, those building blocks that we count on, the building blocks that made Ontario the best province and the greatest country in the world, the building blocks of health care, transit, environmental sustainability, publicly funded education, and elder care. Our message to the people of Ontario is that this plan will give them the relief that they deserve, and the choice on June 2nd will be theirs. Thank you very much. Be happy to take any questions you might have. Okay. Is it on? Okay. We're just going to... Okay, so we've got reporters on the ground here and also on the line. So we're going to start with reporters on the ground. I just ask where possible that you line up behind the mic so that folks on the Zoom can hear the questions you're asking. So let's get started. Hi there, Alan Hale from Queen's Park today. Yeah. Uh, I notice uh, the budget has the uh, same deficit as the PC's uh, spring budget and follows the same sort of line up towards a balanced budget uh, by 2026-27. And considering that the PCs are so often uh, criticized as underspending on things, why would you contain yourself to their, bu their budget deficit? So it's, uh, I think the most important uh, thing for me to convey in this regard is that while the numbers in year one and I believe year four look the same as the Conservatives, the journey that Ontario Liberals will take the people of this province through is remarkably different from the backwards approach of the Doug Ford Conservatives. And what I mean by that is that when you look at our comprehensive plan and everything that we will invest in, uh, whether it's publicly funded education or revolutionizing seniors' care or dealing with the backlog that we have in diagnostics and surgeries, delivering increases to ODSP, there's a long list of choices that we have deliberately made in this plan, a place to grow, to set the people up 
for success in this province. But it was important to me, important to us, to make sure that we had as part of our story to tell the people of, of this province about why they can trust us, why they should trust us, is that we will deliver relief and progress, but we are doing it on a sustainable fiscal path. You know, you've heard me say for so many days now, I just don't think it's good enough. I just don't believe it's responsible enough to put out a platform and let weeks go by with no numbers. And I think it's unconscionable that the Ford Conservatives, after everything we've been through, put out a budget that contained no discernible or coherent plan. Our plan, place, a place to grow, has a coherent path forward to deliver progress and is fully costed and balanced. I also saw in the budget document that there is some talk about uh, protections for uh, consumers who buy electronic products, uh, and there's some hinting towards about repairing those yep. devices. Yep. Um, the right to repair movement is a big thing, especially in the United States. Are you promising that there is going to be right to repair legislation in Ontario? Look, I think it's for sure something that we would be taking a look at. We've heard this discussion now. We heard it during the leadership journey that we were all on from my dear friend Michael Coteau. Uh, we've seen it uh, be talked about by Michael again at the federal level. I think it's something that is uh, picking up steam, as it should, because I think a lot of consumers feel uh, like they're no, they're no longer in control of their destiny when it comes to the devices and other things that they're purchasing. And so for sure, we'd be taking a look at that. Thank you. Morning, uh, Richard Southern with hey, City News 680. Yeah. Uh, obviously, affordability is maybe the biggest issue on the campaign. I don't know you've laid out a few provisions to, to tackle that here, but I think if you ask any driver today, they're going to tell you the thing I'm struggling to afford is gasoline. We're paying about $2 yeah. a litre. Yeah. Would you do anything to help tackle the rising price of gasoline? Well, first of all, you know, come July 1st, I think it's 5.3 cents will be coming down uh, from gas because of the changes to the gas tax, and we would, we would follow through with those. Uh, but the second thing is that from my perspective, as uh, someone who gets to do the groceries uh, proudly every single Saturday morning, I think when it comes to the affordability crisis, you have to look at the whole picture. Right? Yes, the price of gas is, is up, and it continues to go up despite all of what Doug Ford promised four years ago to the people of Ontario. Uh, but groceries, as a result of those gas prices, are up. That's why we're going to take the HST off prepared foods under $20. You know, we see that the ridership numbers on our public transit systems are not where they need to be, not where we want them to be. That's why we're going to dramatically reduce transit fares to $1 per ride everywhere across the province and also only $40 for a monthly pass. You live in a community like mine and Vaughan, you're talking about whether you're a regular user of the TTC or Viva BRT or the GO train, literally saving well over $1,000 each and every year uh, if you switch to public transit with our buck a ride province wide. If you're a vulnerable senior in this province, our plan, A Place to Grow, includes a top-up to the old age security pension benefit, an extra $1,000 per year for the seniors who are in the toughest spot. And of course, I've already talked today about all of the steps that we will deliver upon to give renters and home buyers, particularly first-time home buyers, real relief. So I think when you look at the Ontario Liberal Plan and the entire package of affordability measures, you see that they do target the things that are making life tougher for Ontarians, and we're doing it in a way that is fully costed and balanced. On rent control, do you worry, first of all, that this will discourage people from becoming landlords, number one? And number two, what would you say to a, a condo owner who maybe just bought a condo, planning to rent it out, and now can't perhaps do it at the rent, or next year will be able to do it at the rent that they were anticipating? So look, we're in the midst of an affordability crisis in general, but nowhere more so than I would say in housing, particularly around tenants and first-time home buyers. Uh, we are well past the point where half measures and being kind of grudging about this will work. That's why we will take decisive action to deliver on rent control everywhere in Ontario and also prioritize first-time home buyers for every single unit of housing that is sold by our new Ontario Home Building Corporation. Hi, Stephen. Jeff Gregg, Global hey, Mail. I wanted to ask you about uh, something that's not in the plan. Uh, it ends in 25-26. Are you committing to balancing the budget in 26-27? Well, when I look at the numbers, and I, you know, the, we as a team have spoken about this, when we look at the numbers, I think that we are definitely on a, on a path to be able to balance by the final budget before the next election, so fiscal 26-27. Uh, and I feel, I feel confident that we will be able to do that. Here's what I want to say, though. So there's no confusion about this. These past two years in Ontario with COVID-19, 
uh, th this was not a set of circumstances that any of us were able to predict four years ago. And so there, there are always unforeseen circumstances like, and you know, we obviously don't want any more pandemics, right? But anything that comes up that could be very, very difficult for the people of the province, I think real leadership needs to show up and respond to those challenges. We have included very, very prudent contingencies in all of our costing, multi-billions of dollars, far larger than the contingencies that historically we have in this province, to safeguard against some of those unforeseen circumstances. But I also want to stress, I will not sacrifice or cut publicly funded education or health care or seniors care or economic dignity just in order to balance. I believe we will balance by 26-27, but we are making a deliberate choice as Ontario Liberals, the choice that I believe, we believe the people of Ontario want, which is to build up this province in a fair and responsible and balanced way. So I believe we can balance and should balance, but I also will always choose education, seniors, a clean environment and economic dignity and health care before simply cutting to get to an outcome.